Hey there, Writer Rebels. We've already talked about some of the negative things in self-publishing. However, there are so many huge benefits if this is a path that you want to take. Join me while I go over some of the reasons why I love to be a self-published author. And maybe you'll decide it's something you want to do too. Hey guys, it's me, Scarlett Cole. Hopefully you have healed from the scars that I left you last week on the pitfalls of self-publishing. If you have not watched that video, I will include it in the cards up above there and uh, you can take a look. I know that there was some hard truths in there, but the fact of the matter is that no matter which publishing path you take, there are good things and there are bad things. And you kind of have to take the good with the bad and uh, move forward, or maybe you need to take up a new career. Anyhow, um, I wanted to talk today about some of the reasons why I love to be a self-published author. I am a small press author and a self-published author, so a hybrid author, um, you might say, but I really, really do love self-publishing and I will be continuing it um, going forward uh, with some projects that I have coming up. So uh, I wanted to talk about one some of the reasons why I really, really love self-publishing. And if it, this is something that you're interested in doing, these might be um, some things that might sway you that way. However, before I get into all of these wonderful things about self-publishing, if you would like to hear more from me and don't want to miss any of these videos, make sure you're hitting that subscription bar and the notif notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release a new video. Um, also, if you do like my content, you can check out some of my other videos on my channel and remember to leave a thumbs up if you like them. Okay, so let's get started. The first benefit that I really like about self-publishing is that you can release on your own schedule, whether that be fast or slow. One of the things that a lot of people talk about in terms of self-publishing is the fact that they can release books as quickly as they want to. One of the downfalls with traditional is they books are scheduled several years out in advance. It's making sure that all of those boxes are ticked and everything is ready to go. So they can take a while for if you were to sell your book today, it might not come out for a couple more years. Whereas if you finished a book today and it's edited and it's ready to go, you could have it online and, and for sale in probably 48 hours or less, depending on how quick some of the uh, review processes take online. So there is this huge thing about being able to put out a book whenever you want to, which is really, really wonderful, especially if you have um, something that you're planning to write and all of a sudden, let's say you have a vampire trilogy that you really, really wanted to work on and then all of a sudden you're seeing an uptick in vampires. Well, you can probably move that up in your schedule and get that out a little bit sooner and maybe catch some of that um, sort of vibe that's going around. Uh, you can also make sure that you are, you know, keeping your audience entertained. A lot of readers, you know, have waited for books in traditional publishing, but if you are releasing a little bit more often, then you know, you're staying a little bit more top of mind because it is a little bit harder to get some traction when you are self-publishing. But if people are reading your books a little bit more consistently, then obviously they are going to remember you a little bit easier as well. And please don't misconstrue this as me saying that you either really need to release fast because that is a personal option that you need to decide for yourself. But it is nice that when you release a book and you have, when you're ready to release a book, sorry, and you know, your book is edited and your cover is ready and everything is ready to go, you don't have to sit there and wait on it for an entire year before it's actually gonna hit the shelves. When you are done with your book, it is done and it is out there, which is a huge thing in terms of moving forward. And you're not constantly waiting um, for that book to come out and you're not trying to like pump up that book without, it actually being on sale while you're trying to write something else. It's out there, it's being marketed, and you're moving on to the next thing. The nice thing also is not even so much that you can release faster, but you could also release slow if you want to. It's totally up to you. One of the things that I really like about it is that I have a full-time job. I have two children and I am very, very busy with all of their activities. I have other hobbies that aren't writing, shocker. And um, I like to spend time doing those things. If I want to slow down and release less books, I can do that. I can release one book a year like traditional. I can release one book every two years. Yes, I will caution that that might impact my income. But if I'm writing 
not as a huge business thing or I know I'm not going to be making a huge amount of money out of this, um, I might not care. Also, there are ways to make money selling only one book a year. There are several authors out there who do very, very well releasing only one book a year because they've basically trained their readers that I'm only releasing one book a year, but I write a really good book. So they'll wait for it and they know what to expect and they will wait and support that author and they will do just fine writing the way that they want to write. The beauty thing is too, what if something happens to you? Life happens all the time and you do hear about authors having to move their deadlines and all that sort of stuff. But if you do move a deadline with traditional and things don't work out the way they are, you could get bumped even another year because of the schedule that's already locked into place. Whereas when you are self-publishing, something happens and you need a month, you need a month. Like that's okay. Obviously, you know, you will have to manage some of your reader expectations if they're sitting there waiting for a book to be coming out on August 31st. And then you have to tell them that, no, it's not going to come out till October. Um, you can still do that. Like, obviously there's going to be some repercussions, but you can do that. You can wait to put your book out until you're ready. If you write the book and you have your editor deadlines and all that fun stuff, and then you realize this is not the type of books that I want to put out, or it's not up to the quality that I want it to be, you don't put it out. You just decide not to, and you can wait and do those sorts of things. You can take your time um, if you want to, because you have the option to do that. You can write as fast or as slow as you want. You can release as fast or as slow as you want or are capable of doing. So that is one of the beauty things about self-publishing. And the other thing is you can change it too. Maybe you're going to release a bunch right up front, but then after a while you want to slow yourself down or start slow and then build your way up. Um, you can do that. Uh, like I said, there may be some income impacts. So I'm not saying that that's a strategy you need to follow to make money or do whatever, but you have that choice to do that. All right. And speaking of making money, the second thing that is a benefit to self-publishing is that royalties are higher. Um, obviously, if you are not sharing your royalty with um, a publisher, then you are going to make more of it. However, there is a caveat on this one. As I talked in my pitfalls video, how self-publishing can be expensive, um, you probably will have paid upfront costs for that cover or for that editing or whatever. Um, so if you haven't paid those things off, then that higher royalty will help to pay that off sooner. But um, in traditional publishing, you wouldn't have paid that cost in the first place. So that's something you need to consider. And the second thing you need to consider is higher royalties are awesome, but if you are not selling books, then like 100% of zero is still zero. So um, that is something to definitely take into consideration. Like royalties are great and there's definitely um, some books that I might have had with a self-publisher that did really, really well. And I definitely could have made um, a lot more money if I wasn't splitting it with that publisher. Um, but if I wasn't actually selling, and there are traditional books that don't sell either, um, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be making anything anyway. So even if I'm making less, at least I'm making something. Um, so the royalties stuff is fantastic. However, it is definitely something that matters if you're actually selling books. If you aren't selling, then it doesn't really come into play very much. But if you are selling and you are selling well, that can be a huge, huge income boost compared to um, being with a small press or being with a traditional press because you aren't going to get all of that royalty. So take that one with a grain of salt. But hopefully if you do well in this business and you are making uh, a decent amount of money as a self-publisher, then that royalty rate is going to be a huge benefit for you. The third thing is because you can take risks. The one thing I love about self-publishing is the fact that you can take whatever risks you want. Um, again, that is the caveat of they may not sell. And there might be that problem with that, but there's a lot of stuff that you've probably seen or if you've um, looked into querying or traditional publishing where there's dead genres. Um, if, you know, when the Hunger Games came out after a while and then, the, so there was Hunger Games, Divergent, all that kind of stuff. And then nobody wanted to touch anything that was dystopian. It didn't mean that there wasn't a dystopian audience. It just wasn't 
as hungry for dystopian anymore because there were so much dystopian books out there. Similar thing happened after Twilight. Similar thing happened after Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, people get on those trends. They release a bunch of books in that area and then all of a sudden um, it just gets completely overwhelmed and audiences are looking for something new and fresh. It doesn't mean that there still isn't an audience for it. So if you are a dystopian writer, there still could be dystopian readers out there. However, you would be very hard pressed to get an agent and to get a traditional publishing house to release that book because they've moved on to something else and they're trying to go for the next best, next best thing. So um, being a self-publisher, you can still release those dystopian books and they could still do very, very well with the audience that is still interested and hungry for that sort of read. You can also be a little bit more experimental. Obviously, the further you get from the traditional genres and the traditional tropes and all that sort of stuff, you do run a risk of not selling as well. However, if that's what means something to you, and these are the books of your heart that you've always wanted to write and you've always just wanted to get out there, you can do that. No one's telling you you can't do that. And in some cases, sometimes it works. Um, like look at the new adult boom that showed up a little while ago. Um, I think it was around 2013, 2014. Um, people were looking for college age romance stories and it was self-published authors that started putting out books in this area that they felt there was a gap and people were eating them up. Um, if you talk to traditional publishing, this is not a thing. <laughs> um, but there was definitely an audience in that new adult category that wanted those stories. And the people who were releasing in that area were very successful because that's something that they were passionate about and something that they felt needed to be in the market. So they took that chance, even though there really wasn't an established area there, and it paid off contrary it might not pay off and you could end up with a vampire space book that just doesn't totally hit the market and you aren't going to do well with it that's fine but if it really means that much to you and you've wanted to write that book all your entire life you can totally do that and you will probably find some people who do like what it is that you write I know some people who write like really quirky things because that's who they are and that's what makes them happy and um they probably would never be able to sell them traditionally because it is such a niche in what they write. But they can self-publish those books and they do have people who love what they write because um, it speaks to them in a way that it doesn't speak to the mass market, which is what traditional and some of the smaller presses are looking for that are that's a little bit more commercial than the stuff that they're working on. So the nice thing is that you get to be able to do that and you get to be able to experiment if you want to um, and put out kind of whatever it is you want or whatever it is you think the market might want if that's the way you wanted to go with it and uh, no one can stop you. The next benefit to self-publishing is the fact that you can control your pricing and promotions. If you are a traditional or small press, you need to deal with your publishers if you want to put your book on for 99 cents. If you want to do a promotion for something, if you want to drop your first book to free to promote a series, if you want to get a book bub, you have to ask your publisher um, to do those sorts of things. A lot of them are very good and will work with you on it, but you need to go through them for everything. If I want to order author copies for some of my small press books, I have to contact the publisher to order them for me. I can't even and order them myself. Um, so you kind of lose a little bit of control in terms of how you want to promote your books and you aren't as quite as reactive when you are in a traditional or small press setting. Um, so the beauty thing about that is is you can do promotions and you can change things as quickly as you want to. Like what if all of a sudden Netflix puts out a series that is very similar to your type of book? You could instantly go in the next day, change all of your advertising um, to catch on top of that tail and see if that's going to help boost your books. You can change your pricing. You can put them in different markets. You can up your pricing if that's the way things need to go. And you have the option to do that. You can do it very quickly and it's very easy to make those changes when you're self-publishing. Whereas if you're going through a more traditional publisher, the more traditional that they are, the longer those changes are going to take and the harder it is to make um, quick reactive decisions. 
Hello there, this is Editing Scarlet. I realized I missed a point when I was talking about pricing. It isn't so much pricing, but more about sales. One of the things that you can do as a self-published author that you don't really get to in small press or traditional is you get to see your sales in real time. Why does this matter? You get to see when you make an effort of how that impacts things. Let's say you went to a convention. Uh, yes, you might be able to see at the end of the quarter or the end of the month or whenever uh, that your sales are reported, whether or not you had an uptick in sales, but you may not be able to see that on a day by day basis. Or like I said, it could be quarterly, or I've even seen contracts where you only get sales reports like once a year or twice a year. So if you aren't seeing your sales in real time, you're not going to get to see if any of your marketing efforts are paying off. Let's say you did a Facebook takeover, maybe that boosted sales. Maybe, like I said, you did a convention or maybe you did a talk at your local library. So by being able to see if your sales are picking up after those days, then you can start to make decisions on how you market and how you do things. By self-publishing, you're the one who can see all that information because you're the publisher. So by being able to see your sales, you can make better decisions on how to make more sales. The next one is a huge one for me because I do tend to write a little bit on the slow side. The nice thing about self-publishing is that you can promote while you're writing. Um, in a lot of cases with more traditional publishing, if you're going with a small press, you typically have to write the book before it's going to get picked up. With traditional publishing, you'll do that stuff on contract, um, but it's not done until it's done, until you know for sure that they've accepted the book. There is a possibility that it may not continue. If you are writing a series and it doesn't sell well, that series might end up getting cut short um, because it's not selling. Whereas on the self-publishing side of things, if you are working on a book today and you know you're gonna self-publish it, you can start telling people about it right now because you know that book's gonna come out one day because you're putting it out. There's nobody stopping you from building that hype for your books because you can talk about what you're writing a little bit more freely since you know that that book is going to come out unless obviously something happens or it completely goes off the wayside, but that is your decision not to release it. So I really, really like the fact that I can promote what I'm writing to my readers, I find that it's really beneficial to get that connection with your readers when they know what you're working on and they're anticipating and they're waiting for it and they're really, really excited about that next book. Obviously, some of the bigger authors out there have the privilege of doing that in a more traditional setting because you know that they're gonna put out that next book um, because the series is selling really well or something like that. But for a lot of authors out there, if you are determined not to self-publish, which is a total viable, totally viable path, um, you, the book you are working on right, right now may never get released. So if you are building uh, momentum with some of your readers, then uh, that can be a bit of a problem if that book doesn't come out and they're waiting for it, or you know, you spend a whole year talking about this book and then all of a sudden, you're not releasing that, you're releasing something else. So that's kind of almost a wasted effort uh, with your readers. And they also can kind of feel a little bit, um, you know, betrayed in the fact that that book isn't coming out, even though it's not your fault. And that's not what you intended to do. Not everybody knows all the like background things to do with publishing. So they may not understand why that book's not coming out when you promised that it was coming. So, um, you know, this is a way to make this connection with your readers. You can promote things as you're going, especially since when you're writing, sometimes you get that spark of energy and you just want to tell everybody what you're writing about. And you just want to, you know, discuss that world and get excited about it because you're excited about it yourself. And you, that definitely shows to your audience when you are genuinely excited about what you're writing. So that is something that I've absolutely loved is not having to sit on projects and wait, um, with, announcing them. If you want to talk about them as you're working on them, then you can do that. You can release spoilers whenever you want. You can get input from your readers to change things and all that sort of stuff as you go. So not having to keep that stuff secret is wonderful. Also, one of the other benefits that I find with self-publishing is that you can definitely find you're happy. Um, if you're writing a genre you don't like, you don't have to. If you want to get into a genre that's completely different than what you're writing, knock yourself out. If you want to test the waters with a book here and a book there, you can definitely do that. Will this make you a multimillionaire author? Maybe not. However, if you are unhappy with what you're doing, 
You don't have to be. You can make whatever decisions that you want to make sure that you're writing in a way, in a release strategy function that makes you happy. And then you can change your mind and then you can change your mind again. This could obviously impact your trajectory as an author. However, this can be a really long career for some people. It can be a very lonely place to be writing all the time. And if it's not something that's making you happy, then, you know, it's going to be really hard to stick with. And it's going to be really easy to like start burning out or, you know, just quit altogether. So if you can find a way to love what you're doing, self-publishing might be exactly what you need. Self-publishing can be tough, like I talked about in my pitfalls video, but the fact is you don't have to be unhappy with the publishing process. You can choose to write what makes you happy. You can choose to release when it makes you happy. You can choose to price how it makes you happy. You can only distribute your books by carrier pigeon if that's what you want to do because it makes you happy. And the last really big benefit to self-publishing is the fact that you kind of get to be your own boss. And I know I talked about that in the pitfalls video significantly about the fact that, you know, you have to make all of these decisions and everything falls on you. And if you make a mistake, then it's all on you. And that's 100% true. But the fact is some of this stuff other than writing is also really fun. Like I love cover design. I suck at it. I have, I'm not, I don't actually design my own covers, but when I'm dealing with an artist who knows what they're doing and is passionate about a project and we're picking models or we're trying to come up with a design or a concept or something, like it's really fun. Um, and I love doing that sort of thing. I, you know, when I'm working on formatting or um, trying to figure out uh, design things for, you know, scene breaks and stuff like that, I love doing those sorts of things. Yes, it does take away from my writing time. Yes, I can mess it up. Yes, I understand that every decision is my own and could cost me money, but I really like to see that side of the publishing industry. I like to be able to make those sorts of decisions. I am a type A personality, so I definitely like to have control of a lot of things. If you are not somebody who likes to have control of stuff, then maybe self-publishing isn't for you. But for me, I like to control things. I like to know and to make all of those decisions. And as much as some of them are very stressful sometimes, there's so many fun things about it. And there's so many wonderful decisions that I get to make and to be able to sit back and be like, I decided that and I did that and I made that plot point and nobody made me change it. And that is just wonderful because I have full control over my process and what I want to do and how I want to release things and how my books are going to look and how my books are marketed to readers. I get to make all of those decisions and I get to basically build my career however I want it to be. It's like the biggest Sims publishing game, which maybe could be a really good video game one day, but um, I get to make all of those decisions. I get to be my own boss and no one can tell me what I can and cannot do. So that is probably the biggest benefit um, of self-publishing. However, I do understand that that is not for everyone. And I do have some friends who have zero interest in making those sorts of decisions. They think the things that I do on a regular basis are, yeah, that's kind of fun. And they like to hear my stories. But if it came down to them having to make those decisions, they just don't want to do it. And that is perfectly okay. Everybody's path is different. So um, if that's something that appeals to you, where you want to be, um, you want to be your own boss, you want to be involved in all of these sorts of decisions, you want to be able to take risks, you want to be able to promote the work that you are writing and have a guarantee that it's going to be coming out, um, then maybe self-publishing is the path for you. So um, hopefully you liked this video and that some of this stuff made sense to you. If you are a self-publisher right now, um, leave some stuff in the comments if there's any other benefits out there that you think are worth mentioning. Also, um, if you haven't watched my pitfalls video, please make sure that you are doing that because like I said, 
with every rainbow sometimes there comes a little bit of rain so um, if you liked this video and you want to hear more videos like this please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscription bar below uh, if you have any suggestions on videos that you would like to see please make sure that you are including that in the comments below and I will try to fit that into the schedule I have some really fun ideas coming up that um, I'm excited about, but I would like to make sure that they are in line with the types of videos that you guys want to see. So um, make sure that you're including that in the comments below and I hope you have a great week. Thanks. Bye.